It's about the postpartum hemorrhage, the RCG guideline, and some multiple choice questions. Okay, so first of all, we have to study the pathophysiology. Basically, whenever the, there is contraction of interlacing uterine muscle bundles, that is the important hemostatic mechanism in combating PPH, as you can see from the picture. Now we have to remember certain important uh, figures from PPH, from RCOG guideline, okay. Uh, PPH occurs in about 3 to 5 percent of the delivery, a very important MCQ exam question. And um, in a vaginal delivery, normally 500 ml of the blood is lost and in cesarean, about 1 liter of blood is lost. In minor uh, PPH, we have about 500 to 1000 ml of the blood lost. In major PPH, we have 1 liter of the blood loss and common causes of the maternal morbidity and mortality worldwide is this PPH. Now, what is uh, the massive PPH? That is very important. Ma major obstetric hemorrhage is defined as the blood loss of more than 2 liter. Okay, so either uh, more than 2 liter of the blood loss or blood loss at the rate of 150 ml per second or 50% of the blood volume within the 3 hours. All these are included in the massive PPH. Now, what are its consequences? It may result in decrease in hemoglobin of about more than 4, 40 gram per liter or there is transfusion requirement of more than 4 units. Now, a major obstetric hemorrhage that triggers the massive obstetric hemorrhage protocol is defined as the blood loss that is uncontrolled and ongoing with a rate of blood loss of 150 ml or more per minute. Okay, so by any mean when the blood loss is uncontrolled that can result in massive PPH and we define it as massive PPH when the rate of blood loss is 150 ml per second or more per minute. Sorry, 150 ml or more per minute. Now there is exam MCQ. You are taking consent from the primary gravida for elective LSCS for major uh, placenta previa. And you explain that one of uh, the serious risks associated with the procedure is massive obstetric hemorrhage, which of the following is the best uh, represents the risk of the massive obstetric hemorrhage in the woman. Okay, we have different option, and the answer is 2800. Okay, explanation is that overall the risk of the massive hemorrhage associated with the cesarean for placenta previa is 12 times the normal. You have to remember this thing. It is 12 times the normal. Now, even if uh, the woman did not have cesarean section in the past, still there is increased risk of placenta previa and in, uh, in placenta accreta in patient with the placenta previa and increased risk of the hemorrhage consequently. Now let us study the fluid therapy and blood product in transfusion. and this is very important, okay? When the patient has got PPH and there is a possibility of going in shock, how much crystallite we give? We give about 2 liter of isotonic crystallite and 1.5 liter of colloid until blood arrives. Now blood. Okay, blood we usually give group specific blood, but sometimes what happens that we need immediate transfusion, and in that case, what we do, we we give immediate um, emergency group O, RHD negative, K negative, and red cell units, rhesus T negative, and K negative red cell unit, until we get the group specific blood. Okay, so when group specific blood becomes available we switch to group specific blood ffp ffp administration is very important and how much ffp should we give that depends upon the specific testing hemostatic testing we do and then we give ffp now what test we do we do pt and aptt so ffp is given at the rate of 12 to 15 ml per kg that is very important figure and it's very important that if hemorrhage continues after four units of red blood cells and homeostatic tests are unavailable administer four unit ffps okay so if we don't have the blood test available then we administered four units of bloods and four units of ffp now blood concentrates okay the target is to keep um, platelets above 75 so if platelets is less than 75 cross 10 to support 9 
per liter then we administer one pool of platelets if hemorrhage is going and about the cryoprecipitates it's written that we need to give two pools of cryoprecipitates if hemorrhage is going and fibrinogen is less than two gram per liter prophylactic oxytocin prophylactic oxytocin should be offered routinely in the management of third stage of labor in all women as they reduce the risk of pph by 60 percent and the dose is very important okay um okay the dose in case of the uh, third stage of labor uh, when a baby is delivered vaginally is 5 to 10 units im but the same dose is given when the baby is delivered by cesarean section but by iv route now coming to the causes of the pph there are um, several causes but a 4t formula is written in pph guideline rcg so first of all tone abnormalities of uterine contraction one reason is over distension of the uterus so what are the risk factors for over distension or what causes lower distension that might be polyhydramnios multiple gestation macrosomium not only the over distension but also intra amniotic uh, infarction can cause the abnormality of uh, uterine contraction and the risk factors include fever, prolonged rupture of membrane. We may have the functional anatomic distortion of the uterus and risk factors for that include rapid labor, prolonged uh, labor, fibroid, placenta previa, uterine anoplies. Another factor which causes the abnormality of uterine contraction may include the uterine relaxant, for example, magnesium and uh, nifedipine. Or we may have terbutaline, halogenated um, uh, anesthesia and GTN bladder distension can also cause abnormality of uterine contraction now what about tissues retained product of conceptions like we may have retained cotyledon or second gerate lobe when the baby is delivered placental pieces might be left in the side the uterus or there might be retained blood clots now trauma is another cause trauma may be due to laceration of the cervix vagina or perineum and the cause may include precipitous delivery and operative delivery another reason might be um, sometime there is um, extension of the scar which we give at the time of cesarean suction or there might be laceration at the time of the uh, cesarean suction um, the reason might be malposition of the baby deep engagement that can also cause extension of the tear uh, another reason might be uterine rupture risk factor may include the previous uterine surgery sometime uterine inversion there are several causes of uterine inversion but high parity with excessive contraction is the most prominent cause we may have uh, thrombin like um, which is due to um, abnormality of the coagulation uh, there might be existing state like hemophilia a uh, which is um, in which we will ask about the history of the heredity, coagulopathy or liver disease or uh, there might be idiopathic um, thrombocytic peening purpura in which uh, there might be bruising present and um, when we talk about thrombin we shouldn't forget the von Willebrand disease or history of the previous PPH okay so apart from the pre-existing condition there might be certain acquired condition in pregnancy like gestational thrombocytopenia in which there are bruising, bruising present and preeclampsia or thrombocytopenia or for example have that is associated with the elevated blood pressure and DIC and in that we may have the gestational hypertensive disorder of pregnancy with adverse conditions and coagulopathy is the prominent cause in utrofetal demise and uh, severe infections which may result in fever neutrophilia neutropenia and abruption which um, um, whose risk factor includes the antipartum hemorrhage amniotic embolism can cause sudden collapse and therapeutic anticoagulation and uh, the risk factor includes the history of thromboembolic diseases we shouldn't forget the antibottom and intrabottom risk factors for pph the antibottom risk factors include the preeclampsia multipara multiple gestation big baby polyhydramnio aph previous postpartum hemorrhage previous cesarean section and during labor when the uh, labor is prolonged 
that is a risk factor and if we give oxytocin or augment the labor that is another cause of the bph and uterine atony sometimes patient presents with a fever tachycardia there might be um, underlying cause like infections and that results in chorium neonitis and that is also a reason for bph episiotomy and lacerations can also result in excessive bleeding excessive vaginal assisted vaginal delivery or when we use the um, instruments that can result in bph sometime prolonged third stage of the labor can result in bph okay so first of all we have, when we have major obstetric hemorrhage blood loss greater than 1000 ml continuing major obstetric hemorrhage or clinical shock first of all we will call for help we will call anyone who is available nearby like midwife or obstetrician as it is our colleague uh, even we will alert hematologist we will alert the blood transfusion laboratory and alert the on call consultant okay so after calling for help we will quickly go for resuscitation basically all these steps go go side by side but uh, um for description purpose we will describe the call for help first and then resuscitation in resuscitation airway breathing circulation oxygen by mass 15 liter of the oxygen we will give and then we will quickly uh, look at the blood balance uh, fluid balance sorry and the fluid balance as i've um, described to you in the previous chart that we will give 2 liter of the isotonic crystalline 1.5 liter of the colloid and we will also cover um, junior to arrange the junior or senior whosoever is available to arrange the blood for transfusion like um, o rh negative or the gross plus fit blood and the blood flow product like ffp blood in scribe plus pay factor um, 7a and the keep patient warms okay after that we will quickly go for the medical treatments in which first of all we will rub the uterine fundus we will empty the bladder we will uh, give oxytocin 5 units slow iv repeat if necessary then ergometrine 0.5 mg slow iv or im oxytocin in vein 40 units in 500 ml carboprost 0.25 um, mg im every 15 minutes up to 8 times and carboprost um, uh, intramyomedial 0.5 mg and mesoprostol 800 microgram sublingually and we will also consider the transexamic acid at the same time we will um um uh, send the blood for investigations okay we will ask the staff nurse or assistant or a junior colleague or or whoever is available to put the 14 gauge cannula to on the two sides and take the uh blood sample for full blood count coagulation urine electrolyte lfts cross match four units of the ffp and platelets and cross the prior precipitates and at the same time we will attach ecg oximeter the foley's catheter hp blood uh, site testing blood product constant central and arterial line comes in the record chart and weigh all the swab and estimate the blood loss then uh, if all the parameters uh the medical management of all those fail then we will alert the theta team we will first check that is uterus contracted or not we will examine under anesthesia and if there are any clotting abnormalities we will correct that okay in the theater first of all we will put the intra uterine the balloon tampon out if that is involved the then we will go for a uh, brace suture and also consider interventional radiology if that is involved we will consider surgery in which we will consider the step wise uterine devascularization bilateral internal uh, helicoidal ligation and hysterectomy um uh, by an experienced clinician and then you try now reembolization and at the end we will shift the patient to hdu or intensive care unit now coming to mcq a 42 years old para 3 woman with a three previous normal vaginal delivery Del- um and po- postpartum hemorrhage after her last delivery was induced at 39 weeks of gestation due to severe preeclampsia she had instrumental delivery for prolonged second stage and has consented for active third stage management what is the appropriate treatment of the choice i would like to pause the video by looking at the option and the answer is a syntocin on 10 units im in case of cesarean section the same dose is given but by slow iv injection 
coming to second MCQ, 35 years old, grand multi para, has had major PPH following normal delivery. Mechanical and pharmacological measures have failed to control bleeding. Examination has confirmed that there are no retained placental tissue in the joint cavity and the absence of the trauma to general tract. What is the most appropriate surgical management of the joints? We have different options, and the answer, I would like you to pause the video, think about it, and then reply. So the answer is that of balloon tamponade. If we go step one. Now this chart shows the degree of the shock. We have different degrees like one, two, three, and four. And in each and every degree, um, there is specific estimated amount of the blood loss. And when we see the patient clinically, we come across these sinus symptoms and blood pressure is usually this one. Like in first degree shock, usually 500 to 1000 um, ml of the blood is lost. Uh, the blood pressure is usually normal and patient presents with palpitation, tachycardia and dizziness. But if we have the blood loss of uh, 1 liter to 1500 ml, then there is slight fall of the systolic pressure, blood pressure um, of about 80 to 100 millimeter mercury is that of systolic blood pressure and sign and symptoms include weakness, tachycardia and sweating. But in case of the um, uh, stage 3 or grade 3 shock, the blood loss volume is about 1500 ml to 2 liter and there is moderate fall of the systolic blood pressure that is usually 70 to 80 millimeter mercury and patient presents with restlessness, pallor and oliguria. But if we have grade 4 shock, usually the blood loss is 2 liter to 3 liter and there is more fall of the blood pressure 50 to 70 millimeter mercury and patient presents with collapse, air hunger and anuria. Okay, so this is a very informative table. Thank you so much for your kind listening. And uh, I would like to read the whole RCOG guideline about PPH in detail.